Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am the Tesla Prince and today we have an interesting video. Um, last summer in 2020, I made a short uh, video clip talking about Kakwa Provincial Park and that's basically what you see here on the screen uh, yesterday on May the 30th uh, 2021 I drove down the Walker Creek Forest Service Road with a friend um, all the way to the Bastille Creek Bridge and uh, we're gonna talk about this experience because I've discovered that online there is not a lot of information that's current and this park is absolutely gorgeous and I just basically wanted to compile what I've learned to date about this park and your experience and you know there's a lot of things to pack into this video I'm going to try to make it not go too long the audience here you know there's people who are hiking on the Great Divide Trail also known as the GDT which actually ends on this road on Walker Creek Forest Road, it comes into Kakwa and people have to get out through this road. So there's a group of people that do a very long hike uh, that would be interested in this video. There's people who would like to hike into Kakwa Provincial Park and camp and maybe hunters and all kinds. So let's get into it. Uh, just this opening picture is one of the pictures we took along the way. Of course, this here is the official BC Parks website gives you a bunch of details and just to start it off Kakwa that name itself is a I believe a native uh, name for native people that live in the area and it means porcupine and there are a fair amount of porcupines in this park and lots of animals we saw bear um, we saw porcupines you can see all kinds of uh, you know animal dung and whatever scattered all over the road for about a hundred kilometers you know many hours of driving and you'll see signs of animals anyway in this park um, they talk about the road and various things and you know this is probably a good place to start here this information isn't really the most up-to-date um, but uh, you know coming here just some of the history on Wikipedia they talk about this used to be I guess like a mining operation for a quartz mine long ago um, and that's basically why the road was put in you can also see here the Great Divide Trail uh, starts at the US border works its way up through like Banff and Jasper parks and ends at Kakwa and so yeah there's there's a, a decent amount of traffic but really not a lot of information it's a very pristine wilderness park and it's absolutely epic I'm going to show some pictures and video clips and we're going to talk more about it all right so coming into here uh, again this park was established in 1987 um, it straddles the continental divide so interestingly enough that means on one side of the mountains the water goes to the Art, uh, Atlantic Ocean and the other side of those mountains that they flow to the Pacific um, this park also uh, has half of it in British Columbia and half of it in Alberta so it does straddle both provinces interestingly um, so let's see what else we can get into here um, so in 1999 it received a class A provincial park designation uh, it's the most northerly protected area in a continuous 372 mile chain uh, of, of peaks in the Rockies um, again it borders British Columbia and Alberta um, and there was a reason why I've got this link um, some interesting statistics here yeah so one of the pictures you're gonna see is a pyramid uh, type looking mountain you know really pointy peak and um, it says here uh, Mount Ida a pyramid summit is often identified as the Matterhorn of the North actually I'm not I don't think I don't know if that was Mount Ida that I see in the picture or not we'll, we'll confirm it when we look at Google Earth later in this video um, but just absolutely awesome ice covered peaks all along the way on this drive to the park it's just absolutely fantastic to get there and here look at this guys 
In addition to showcasing ice-clad summits, Kakwa uh, protects significant cave, fossil, and dinosaur track sites. A number of caves have been discovered in limestone formations within the park boundaries, though many are still unexplored. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but those of you that have that natural, you know, explorer in you, this park really has it all. But it is very remote and you really got to be prepared if you're going to have a successful uh, time there. Um, and what else? There's yeah, a bunch of peaks in there. Mount Sir Alexander is the largest. It's, well, I'll show you on Google Maps later, but it's huge. Kakwa Park has uh, Mount Ian Monroe, which I believe is where that quartz mine is. It's right there at the park, and uh, so that's an, a mountain of note. Um, and what else do we have here? Lots of trails there, and I've already mentioned Great Divide Trail actually ends up in Kakwa Park. Okay, so let's talk a little bit here. Um, I guess at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull in uh, Google Earth and I'm going to talk about my journey um, because really this video is about my my driving trip to the Bastille Creek Bridge. So this is Highway 16 here and this is where uh, Walker Creek Forest Service Road uh, connects in there and I'll do a quick summary. So from, from the highway to where this Forest Service Road meets this river here is the McGregor River. That is 32 kilometers. And that's the road's not bad. Um, you do cross over some wet and rocky areas, but it's pretty decent. And honestly, this section feels like a highway compared to the rest of it. So it gets really beautiful uh, once you get to this river and you can kind of look down this valley here towards these big snow peaks really beautiful. Um, you're going to see some pictures. Once you get to this uh, part of the road where it meets the river, on the right hand side you're going to see a waterfall. Uh, I believe a creek is flowing down from this mountain and there's a waterfall that passes underneath the road through a big culvert. Just before that waterfall, which is on your right hand side if you're driving north, um, just before it, if you look carefully, you'll see a moss-covered rock where there's a, I'll show you a picture of it, but it's like a big spring, you know, like where all this water comes into, and it's like a big bathtub almost, I guess you could call it, and the water's up to your shoulders, and it's just carved out of the rock, and sometimes you see a little waterfall. Uh, in the morning, water was pouring down, and you'll see that in the video, and in the evening when we were coming back home, the water wasn't flowing anymore, so it's kind of interesting. Anyway, you see that right at that junction there and then after that you know the road slowly gets a little bit more rough but in about 10 kilometers probably around this area here around there the road starts to get rough um, at that point and uh, it just progressively gets more and more rough I think at about that 10 kilometer like so now 43 kilometers in around there maybe 43 to 50 kilometers you're gonna see things like landslides actually part of the mountain just sloughed right onto the road and you have to drive around it. You're going to see sinkholes, you're going to see all kinds of things. And we'll get into all of that. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, at 43 kilometers it gets rough. And then down here at the Bast Bastille Creek Bridge, that's 73 kilometers. And honestly, I just want to point out, if you couldn't drive from the highway to there, I'm not sure if this is a viable park to even enjoy, at least from the BC side. I'm not sure about the Alberta side, but I'm pretty sure it's hard to get to this park from Alberta uh, from my research. So the only other way to get in here would be like snowmobiling in the winter, which a lot of people do. You can check YouTube for that. But then it's like helicopter and float plane. And only certain outfits are allowed to do that. It's expensive, on and on. So that's sort of the quick summary. Um, of this view, what else can I say? Um, maybe I'll kind of zoom in a bit here and talk to these points. Yeah, I'll probably bounce back to this map maybe when we go through. And just to point out one other thing, you know, I, I thought to myself, is there an easier way to get in to that Bastille Creek Bridge? And I'm not 100% sure, but I think at Crescent Spur, 
there's this road called Lou's Road, and it's this road right here. It uh, actually crosses over, it looks like here, according to uh, Google Earth, there's a bridge that crosses the Fraser on Lou's Road. Um, and when you follow Google Earth, it seems to go on this side of the river, and you follow it through, and that's why I have this other red thing here, because someone, if you have time, maybe you can take this logging road and eventually come to here and it zigzags up the mountain if that road is still there even if you park at the bottom down here um, you could hike over this mountain and hook right into Bastille Creek and then cross over the bridge so you should be able to hit the road somewhere here and this distance from here to there uh, I believe if I click on this I think it's 10 kilometers so 5.72 miles and 9.21 kilometers so that's still a fair amount, but if that road was uh, inaccessible, this would be your, your only other way. Um, okay, so let's get into this. So drag that out of the way. And get back over here. So here you can see my, uh, my timeline in Google Maps driving from Prince George. And from Prince George to uh, the turnoff to Walker Creek, uh, Forest Service Road. It was about two hours each way, plus or minus, you know, 15 minutes. So, you know, four hours of driving just just to get to that forest road. Two hours there, two hours back, um, and then down this road, getting from Highway 16 to the Bastille Creek Bridge, which is right around here, is three hours one way. So, three hours to drive 70 something kilometers and then three hours back. It's pretty rough terrain. You can't go fast. And honestly, guys, there's you, even if you're an expert driver, you're going to get killed if you go any faster than that. It's pretty pretty sketchy in some places. So just wanted to point out the times. So, you know, three hours in, obviously three hours back. Um, and that doesn't include getting back to Prince George or McBride, wherever you're coming from. All right, so let's kind of take a look at Google Maps here. So here's that highway. Here's the logging road. Uh, this view kind of shows here's Alberta. So they have Kakwa Wildland Park and we have Kakwa Provincial Park. And when I zoom in, you can see again there's the border. Here, uh, where would that Buchanan Bridge be? Yeah. So Buchanan is right here. Okay, so what that means is. The pictures we took from Buchanan were looking up these this peak here and up into these peaks. So Mount Sir Alexander is basically visible from um, that Buchanan, Buchanan Creek Bridge. As long as these frontal mountains aren't blocking it, I'm not sure. But it, it is the highest one, so I'm assuming you can see that from there. Um, just a few things I want to point out as well. Uh, I think it was, I'm, I'm thinking it's somewhere in here in this valley. Uh, when we drove on this road, it was absolutely gorgeous looking in this valley. It was a big V-shaped and just a wall of rock. Yeah, it was in this area here. This area is something certainly worth exploring. Um, if you had like a jet boat or something and checking up here, it's just stunning up here. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. And uh, yeah, so let's talk about the mountains. Mount Sir Alexander is there. Some of the other mountains that were named uh, up here. So after you cross over that bridge, um, getting to the park, it's about... Uh, 12 kilometers to get to the park boundary so I think uh, yeah 12 kilometers I don't know if that's to this valley or if it's all the way up to here we'll take a look maybe we'll be able to see that uh, if I drag Google Earth here that should tell us so yeah it looks like the first valley that's 12 kilometers from the bridge to the park boundary 
and that's where Buchanan Creek is. Now, this section is definitely the most hardest uh, section to navigate. There's two ways you can travel. You can take the main gravel road, which is again, Walker Creek Forest Service Road, which veers when you're looking, driving from Highway 16 to the bridge and looking towards the east, the road continues straight ahead into like a quad trail or it forks to the left. The main gravel road forks to the left and goes right to the McGregor River. And uh, the advice I've been given online is take that trail to the McGregor River because it's uh, much better cleared. Even though the road is washed out in multiple places by the river, apparently there's places to walk around those washouts in the bush because taking the quad trail, people tell me is 12 kilometers of mud and water and it's just miserable. So that's, that's what people have told me. I haven't traveled it. Let's continue this discussion. So coming back to here, uh, Bastille Creek is here, the bridge, and it's intact. And uh, yeah, you can see here on the map, it shows it going straight, this quad trail. Avoid that uh, is, is my opinion. And take the left fork going down here and I'll show you a picture right here where you can see this riverbed, which was actually dry when we went yesterday, and the road going here. So I have a feeling you can go a pretty long distance before it's washed out. And like it looks here like there's this walk around in the green area and it rehooks up eventually down here. Um, and once you get to the park boundary right here, um, there's a number of creeks that you will have to cross and you will get wet. Let me just call it out now. Other people who have traveled this just last year, um, I'll try to link their video in the description, but it was very, very wet. Um, all the bridges are washed out and there's a number of creeks and depending on the time of year, they could be fast flowing and deep or they could be more shallow, so I, I don't know. And Buchanan Creek, you're gonna get wet. Once you cross that, it's pretty much easy going the rest of the way from everything I've heard. So that's talking about that. So it is 30 kilometers from uh, Bastille Creek to Kakwa Lake, which is probably gonna take you about eight hours one way uh, because it isn't a walk in the park uh, traveling that. If you get a mountain bike, you know, maybe you can half that time or something, maybe. Anyway, Mount Sir Alexander is here. If we get into the park area, uh, it's absolutely stunning here. You've got Mount Ian Monroe, which is this mountain here where the quartz mining operation was taking place. And it overlooks Kakawa Lake. You have somewhere is Mount, here's Mount Ruth over here. Somewhere is Mount Ida. And I'm not sure where Mount mm -hmm. Ida is. I have a feeling it's in here and I don't know if I have to zoom in more. Or if I just type it in up here. Mount Ida. There it is. Alright, so yeah, Mount Ida is, is up here. So that's another notable mountain, which I guess is pretty big. And there's, there's just glaciers up here. Um, definitely, you're going to want to visit Babette Lake. So you come to Kakwa, I believe the cabin is somewhere right around here at the mouth. Um, yeah, somewhere right here and there's a dock and whatnot. Um, and there's Mount Ian Monroe and you can just follow this trail up to Babette and just really gorgeous in here. And if I try to, yeah, I can't get this into 3D mode. Maybe I'll try to do that here. So if we get this into 3D mode, like this, just to get an idea, um, you can see, you know, hiking up here, it, there is a bit of incline, but um, you just have this rock wall and waterfalls are pouring down some of this. Uh, I've seen from pictures from others and you've got this lake up here, which is an emerald colored lake. And I believe if you come up here, I can zoom around. I think there's, yeah, another little smaller lake there, right up here. And, you know, you can come up right up onto this 
hike up onto this plateau and I don't know if you can make it to the summit here I think you can um, but anyway this is just an absolutely fantastic area you know unspoiled wilderness some people say this whole park is like what Mount Robson and Jasper and Banff what they were like a hundred years ago um, just you know raw untamed all right so talked about that let's get into the good stuff here in a minute so here's I have an account I use uh, Gaia GPS and uh, I'm just showing here if I zoom in you can see here the BC side of the park and this is the Alberta side of the park and that's the provincial border um, but you can see for those of you that are looking from the Great Divide Trail mm -hmm. you can see it comes over from the Alberta side uh, through like the Rockies and all this kind of thing and it comes up into here and it comes right to Kakwa, Kakwa Lake at the cabin here and so to get out to finish your trail most of you are going to have someone park a vehicle on Walker Forest Service Road and uh, if you have 4x4 four four, you should be able to park it there's a big open area right on the uh, west side or, yeah the west side of Bastille Creek which is over here so you should be able to drive a good 73 kilometers in I know other people who made this video last year they were parked way back here so they had to walk at least another 30 or 40 kilometers because this road was really rough and they just had a van, like a big blue van. So, um, you know, this part here is the most miserable to walk, for sure. So you can make your plans accordingly. But there's not much traffic on this road, so if you kind of need help or something, you're probably not going to see anyone there. Maybe after I make this video, the traffic will pick up, who knows. So just to show, that's where the Great Divide Trail actually comes onto Walker Creek Forest Service Road and comes out right at Highway 16 here. Um, okay, what else can we talk about? So let's get into the pictures. Let's get into the pictures. I made a little album here, and let's just go through this. Uh, so here's the first one. Out here at Kakwa. Out here at Kakwa. With my friend Dan. With my friend Dan. Say hello. Say hello and uh, pretty cool and uh, pretty cool so I'll just pause this so this is that like bathtub spring and you can see the waterfall there and this you can see it's just right to the right hand side of the road when you when you're driving on Walker Creek Forest Road and it meets the McGregor River and just before the big waterfall on the right this is on the right and you might not see it in the summer it might be hidden by some bushes but it's there Waterfall, slash, waterfall, pretty slash, deep, uh, pretty deep uh, bathtub kind of thing. Bathtub here. kind of thing here. You see it flowing from. You see it flowing from the mountain up there. The mountain up there. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Okay, so that's that one, and we'll just keep checking out. So here are the pictures, and I try to do them in order of how we took them, at least for the first few. So we put a stick in there and, and it basically I'm six foot two and it comes right up almost up to my neck, like at least my shoulder. So it is a pretty deep pool and it's not flowing all day long. So it probably does get warm, but who knows? Maybe it's cold. I don't know. We never went in. Um, and this is the area. There's a boat launch kind of thing there. And this is where Walker Forest Road meets the McGregor. And you'll see this mountain here and you'll see that kind of pyramid mountain there. But I don't think that's Mount Ida yet. I'm not sure which one that is. Maybe we can take a quick look here and figure it out. So where is that? Before I lose my bearings. Let's twist this around. Uh, so that would be over here somewhere. Right here. All right, so as we're looking northward, it's this mountain here, and it's not labeled in this Google Earth for some reason. Let me do that over here, Google Earth. Okay, so it's huh, still not a labeled mountain for some reason. Dezeko Peak is over there, but I'm not sure which one this is. 
So sorry about that, guys. It's uh, a peak that's there, but it doesn't have a name. Coming back to the photos, so, and right there on the road, there's some bear dung. So lots of, you know, bear and moose and deer and porcupine in this area. There's that pyramid mountain that you'll see right when the road meets the McGregor. Uh, and there's that waterfall on the right hand side of the road and just before that that's where that big spring is and this waterfall was spilling over northward over there and a little video clip where I show that right, so we're here at a, right, so we're here just at, at a, a, just at the point where point Walker where Creek. Walker Creek meets the McGregor, meets here, the McGregor and just at this here, corner and have, just at this corner we have this waterfall. I showed this waterfall. Last year summer, I showed this last year in the summer. But bigger it's now because it looks like bigger now because it looks like that same creek is that same creek kind is of flowing over here. Kind of flowing over here. So, so yeah, it's kind of yeah, it's kind of yeah. So just to show that you know, and the water flow on this part of the road, it's not full. In another two to three weeks. There's so much snow in the mountains above us that this road could see a lot more water damage in the coming weeks. So just take note of that. It might be okay, but you'll see what I mean. So further down the road, past that waterfall, I don't know, five kilometers or 10 kilometers, you come to this fork in the road where it goes left. And if you go left, it comes down to this little camping area. And this is maybe 10 or 15 feet above the uh, river and all of this edge here is like sloughing off into the river. It's very muddy but you can see there is a fair amount of space here. Probably easy to get stuck again. You, you only want 4x4 taking this road guys. Probably don't need 4x4, I'm gonna say maybe not until you get to that part where it meets the McGregor, maybe. But after that you're in trouble if you don't have 4x4. Um, so this is that muddy area and this is on a dry part of the season guys it just gets more wet from here uh, this is me parking that's the fork the main road goes that way and we pull down here just to take a look uh, here's a view again from that camping area of some mountains and the McGregor and it's the McGregor is definitely not in its high flow that's probably coming in the next uh, three weeks and just some more bear dung um, and just along the road, eventually we kind of accidentally saw this trapper's cabin. Uh, I may have some more pictures here and there's like a wooden shed there and it's all locked up and it's got an official stamp. You can see these old traps. Doesn't seem like they've been active for a long time. And we saw these all along this road, by the way, guys. This wasn't the first cabin, so you can see there, trap line cabin, British Columbia. He's got his number. It was just really cool to see it. Here's right, some so pictures. Here. All right, so we're here <coughs> at the first bridge. At the first bridge after a uh, turn off. After a uh, turn off. There's this old trapper's and cabin here. There's this old trapper's cabin here. No trespassing, which we won't. No trespassing, which we won't. Of course. A little building back little there, but building back there, here. but you can see we're up here. Probably about 10, 15 feet. About 10, 15 feet. On a ledge feet. down into the river. On a ledge down into the river. And, uh, pretty cool and, spot uh, here. Pretty cool spot here. You can see. You can see. So let's cut that short, but there's that trapper's cabin just on the other side of this bridge. And now you start to see conditions change, guys. So here you can see the road, this big crack, and it's starting to slough, right? This is the beginning of sorrows, so to speak. So shortly after that, you hit this mudslide. That's what this is. I think I might have made a video, but this covers like a bunch of trees and mud covering the whole road and there's just enough room to get around it. If you had a trailer or you were longer than than an F-150 or something, it might be sketchy, but I'm just saying, this is the kind of thing and there could be new things coming when you guys make the trip. I think here's a we video a now showing here. this we got here. got a landslide here. You can see the mud. Can see the mud has crossed the entire lane. Has crossed the entire and, lane, uh, and uh, kind of a makeshift, kind of a makeshift path over here on this path side. Path over here on this side, but a uh, lot of sink. But a uh, lot of sink. A lot of sinkholes. A lot of sinkholes. Or at least sloughing of the road. Or at least sloughing of the uh, road. And uh, really got to watch it here. Really got to watch it here. We got a landslide. We got a landslide. All right. So beyond that, um, 
you know, these are the things you're going to see. It just progressively gets worse. Here's the sinkhole. And I believe the video from the couple that did the Great Divide Trail last summer, they parked their van right around this sinkhole. So that landslide is probably new. Um, and you just have to be really careful. I noticed somebody has a lot of these lit little ribbons. And if you see a ribbon, it's usually there for a reason. So pay close attention. Most of these potholes, you know, they have good gravel in them. It's fine to go through if you have four by four and high clearance. Just be really careful. Don't go too, too fast, but don't go too, too slow. Too fast, you're gonna wreck your truck. Too slow, it might be a little muddy and you could get stuck. So you know what I'm talking about, anyone who's done four by four. Um, some people went here on the right, but again, if it's wet out, this stuff is sluffy and muddy, you could get stuck. So be really careful. It just shows how deep this is. Um, and then of course, you know, there's this beaver pond. I think this was the only real deep water we had to cross. And later on, I'm going to show a little video of what that looked like. Uh, my friend Dan took a little video clip of the truck driving through. Not too big of a deal when we went, but again, more rains and more melting. Who knows what's going to happen with this? And I did find some somebody's front license plate there and, uh, I posted it online and I'll probably bring it to the Prince George RCMP. I'll just grab it here. So if this is yours, get the full number in there. If that's yours, contact me and it's either, either I have it or the RCMP and Prince George have it. And uh, yeah, I found it. So you know, there's another t kind of thing that you'll have to cross. And just endless waterfalls. You're going to see these, but, you know, we were really distracted because the road was, was quite nerve-wracking and you had to watch out for hazards. We didn't pay attention too much to all the nice things to see, and I really regretted that, but we tried. You know, we got these pictures. Both sides. So on the right-hand side, you see waterfalls all the time and bridges, and on the left-hand side, just gorgeous mountains with their own giant waterfalls pouring down, etc. Um, and of course landslides and whatever it's just absolutely stunning pictures and views now this was a very sketchy part of the road um, you can see this is a very deep crack I kind of took this from the side angle to show how big that crack is because you can see there's water flowing underneath this and and this had on the other side you'll see I make a video of this and uh, I took me a while to build up the courage to drive past this just because if you go if your truck is much wider than mine there's a good chance you could get stuck sinkholes on both sides very narrow even the middle section is sinking and there's a little creek flowing underneath it this was one of the most sketchiest parts there was another more scary part than this though and you can see the truck was just barely able to make it through I was really afraid if I sunk on either side you know the truck could tip right over or something so here's the so video this is probably the most sketchiest, so thing, we the most sketchiest thing we crossed you can see here you can see here the water's there and just the water's the there and just where the wheelbase comes across here it's comes very easy across to slough, here it's very easy to slough some snow so it can be slippery snow, so it can be slippery and over here and over here you've got the sinkhole you've got so we're sink right hole. on the edge so there. we're right on the edge there so really got to watch so yourself here really got to watch yourself here but an f-150 made it through just give yourself momentum, give yourself momentum. And be careful not to and be careful not to get into this get into that mud get into this muck over here just got to keep going just got to keep so this going. is probably the most sketchy so this is probably the most all right so gorgeous mountains here um just huge rock faces and just stunning beauty you know so it was supposed to be a sunny day but in Kakwa Park, there's not many sunny days. It's just a very wet uh, rainforest is what it is. Cedar trees all over the place, moss everywhere. It's a very wet climate and gorgeous climate. You know, lots of snow peaks everywhere. Rock faces. And here's another sinkhole. Not a big deal. We just took pictures of stuff to show you guys. Not a big deal to get through this stuff. And this part, I believe, is at the Bastille Creek Bridge. This is looking uh, westward, and the bridge is eastward. So let's take a look. So there's the Bastille Creek Bridge. 
It's a very long bridge, 50, 60 feet across, concrete, um, really well built, and just gorgeous uh, views of like Mount Alexander and other things there. Uh, this is a view from the bridge. You can just see this mountain range looking northward. Bastille Creek just busting, you know, almost busting over the uh, banks. And further down, it's actually flowing into the forest. Really high flow there. Actually, Bastille Creek had a higher flow than the McGregor River at this time in the year. Um, there's me parked on the west side of the bridge. I just never came further. Here's looking southward from the bridge, Bastille Creek Bridge. And this is the road after the bridge that forks left. I'll have another picture showing that. And a little ways down it says wash out ahead, bridge closed. Well, pretty sure there's no bridges after this. They're all washed out. This goes all the way to the McGregor River and keeps following. And this is basically what the road looks like. It's just myriads of trees. So driving here, not an option unless you, like, you get out your chainsaw. And you're going to be cutting for a good long time because it's maybe a kilometer and a bit and just lots of tree f tree fall and this is now where the road meets the McGregor and I have a better picture here this is the riverbed of the McGregor the closest one that you'll see and then there's this middle island and then the real river is on the other side of that and we didn't walk over there so again it's all dry here so the McGregor's not heavy flowing yet gorgeous pictures of mountains and this is now past that middle island and the real McGregor River with all the big mountains right at the base. And just looking northward, looking towards the mountains, northward. The other one, sorry, was looking uh, eastward. Northward, this is looking back towards the road where we came. I believe that road where we came was up there. So we're like west down this uh, rocky area. And little pyramid peak over there. More pictures. So this is a really good picture. This is where uh, Walker Creek, the main road, comes right to McGregor. This is the exact meeting point, and it goes towards the east. So it goes a distance over there. Eventually, it gets washed out by the river. And people tell me that it goes through the bushes and connects back. So a lot of people tell me this is the way to take. So just mentioning and it probably depends on the time of year it could be really wet but as you can see right now May 30th it was it's dry here at least in these uh, areas of the McGregor so it's probably the trails in better condition alright so this is the quad trail so I told you after the bridge there's a fork and it goes left which is what we just saw or it continues directly eastward and these are the conditions just muddy sections fairly deep and really heavy brush just mud and brush the whole way and there's my friend Dan checking it out he walked a little ways this is Bastille Creek Bridge just to show you hey everybody Did I make so a video here I think it is on the way to Cacwa this is the Bastille Creek with, uh, Bastille bridge Creek with here uh, Bastille Creek here flowing very, very high. See it's very very high in fact I in fact, the other clips. I showed this the other clips. This looks faster flowing, this and, looks deeper faster flowing and deeper McGregor than looks what like. the McGregor currently looks like. The McGregor is not overflowing, is not into, its overflow. overflowing into its overflow uh, sections, uh, which I'll show pictures sections, and videos, which of, show pictures and videos but, uh, of that. This bridge is critical. But, uh, this bridge is critical. Too. It's pretty long, I'm gonna too. Say, I'm going to say maybe 50 feet or 60, maybe 50 feet, feet, or or 60 feet across or something. And I'll just stop it here. There's Here's the fork. This road goes uh, to the north, and that's where we saw it, and it continues straight Friend into that Dan mud bog. Gonna check. Friend Dan the trail forks here on the other the side of Bastille Bridge, Bridge, goes, left, of Bastille the Bridge goes left, which is the main... All right, so let's continue on. All right, just to give Got some another video here. Just to give some perspective Bridge. here again on the Bastille facing Bridge. West. Facing west. Looking north. That's Looking north. The that's the Bastille Creek. And these are Creek. a bunch of mountains and here. Are and that's where it flows here. into the McGregor. Absolutely gorgeous. Little rivers flowing down Little into the McGregor. Little rivers flowing down into Over there the McGregor. At the base of these mountains. Over there at the base of these the mountains. That's where this is the McGregor. Connects that's where this connects to. About a kilometer that way. And uh, Kakwa that way. And uh, Kakwa that way. And then looking south here. And then looking south here. This river flows. This river flows. Okay. And around that bridge there is a trapper's cabin. And we'll see some pictures here again. Some old traps set up. 
There's another one on the ground and you can see some firewood cut from trees that fell over this trail going to the cabin. And trappers cabins are private, emergency use only. And be careful guys, you know, it's booby trapped for a bear. You can see down here, there's like boards with nails and it's really sketchy. I, you know, unless you're dying, don't go anywhere near this stuff guys. That's, that's my advice to you. But if you're gonna die, yeah, you're gonna find something there that maybe can help you. But there's no cell service out here. You know, these are the nails. Probably keep the black bears and, and other animals out. That's what it looks like. And here's me parked just west of the bridge. The bridge is like right up there. Big clearing here on the south side of the road. Uh, you can park there, whatever. So, and then there's, of course, gorgeous mountains in the background there. Let's see what I say here. Parked here. So. Parked here, Creek bridge, right at the Creek south bridge, of the road, south of the road, and just, road. Epic and just here, covered in mountains snow. here, covered in snow. And that noise is Bastille Creek. That noise is Bastille Creek. You hear in the distance. Just lots of awesome snow. Lots of awesome snow. Mountains. So. Okay, let's keep it going. Oh, here's really cool area. So this area was. Um, that area that I mentioned in Google Maps that had like this big V-shaped and really cool place to explore. It was just so gorgeous. Oh, I guess I didn't make a video, but it's an area my friend and I would really like to check out. Took a lot of pictures of it because we were really impressed. I think that's an area to discover something for sure. Just absolutely gorgeous. And just to show some of the conditions, you know, there was still snow around on the side. Some of the road had snow as well, as I'm sure you saw in some of the pictures. But we did blaze the trail. We cleared all the brush that was covering the road, probably six or seven or eight sections that had covered the road. We had a chainsaw. So you, as of the 30th, you can get to the Bastille Creek Bridge if anything doesn't change. Another waterfall flowing under the bridge, I guess a creek flowing there, beautiful mountains in the distance, lots of nice pictures. Here's a wooden bridge showing max five tons, still some snow here. And this, I'll come back here. This one, let's uh, get to the beginning. Uh, this is probably one of the scariest ones. So this road here, there's a big wooden uh, beam on the road here and it drops two feet. So it's pretty tough to go over this without crunching the bottom of your truck. It's just too much, too much height. And coming back was pretty scary too. So let's see what I say here. And the ribbons tell the story so to watch here, out for it. Uh, so we're road, here uh, looking, back, road, towards Bastille, looking this, back towards Bastille. Looking back towards Bastille. There's these markers this here on the side. But look right at this guy. Right here, there's an orange marker. And it just drops off like a cliff. And it just drops off like a cliff. Okay, like. Okay, like. It's hard to see it in the video. Step here and. Step here. You know, you know yeah it's it's like yeah, a two foot drop it's like a two foot something drop like that so something like that really so gotta pay attention to really these gotta markers. pay attention really to these markers they're really telling the story here coming down you're really gonna coming down you're really gonna and just to say that if it's wet conditions you know you could really slide and might be tough to get traction to get up and down and whatever this one again is deceiving it doesn't look too bad in the video but this is the one we were the most concerned with Probably bring shovels guys. That's the other thing we didn't bring. Maybe you could carve away this wood so you don't have to slam into it and make it more of a slope. That would probably help. But anyway, just saying. So this was tough. The bottom just kept crunching that wood and it was just impossible. Even if you went on an angle, I tried to kind of come on an angle, but there's mud on both sides and you know, you only have so much you can do it. So you can see I, I came on an angle and then came out of this mud back. So anyway, more b beautiful pictures, creeks flowing under the bridges. This is again from one of the bridges. There's that triangle or pyramid peak. And this is that uh, spring and it wasn't flowing anymore um, at the end of the day on our way back. So that was kind of interesting and you can see sort of water here and there's a big culvert that the water goes under the road into the McGregor. 
Now, here's that, oops, let's go back. So here's a video of me um, going through that beaver pond. So let's take a look so you can get an idea of how deep it is. Well, here's Mark giving the car, well, here's Mark car giving the car, truck a car wash. Right, so it was past my floorboards deep. So probably, you know, halfway up the wheel wells at least. Um, just a little bit above the floorboards, maybe with the splash. So it was doable to cross. Don't go too fast because if you get water in your air intake, you're done. You're going to hydro lock your engine and you're done. But don't go too slow because if it's a little bit slippery or muddy, you need some momentum to keep pushing through that. So anyway. That's what that was. Here's that trapper's cabin. Some river there. Nice pictures of the mountains. McGregor. Picture from the bridge. Here's that bathtub area again. And here's a picture from the road. Um, really beautiful pictures of the mountains. Just absolutely gorgeous views All right this is the kind of stuff that you see and it's really hard to not pay attention when you're terrified of the road but uh, you get over it pretty quick here's a trail leading to trapper's cabin that's the first trapper's cabin anyway a little footpath from the road and another picture of that first fork by the road more pictures of the mountains and waterfalls and this is right near Bastille Creek Bridge. I think that was the end of the photo shoot. So the question is, in this video I've shown you and I've talked about getting from Highway 16 to the Bastille Creek Bridge. All kinds of things in between. Why would you want to go to this park is the question. You know, you get to that bridge, you still have 30 kilometers to travel one way. And the answer is from the BC Parks website and other people's videos. Let's look at some of these pictures. So, you know, this is these are the kind of sites that you could see. Uh, if you go up to Babette Lake, I believe, these are those big rock wall mountains. You're going to see just waterfalls pouring out of caves. Um, glaciers just right there. And there's ice caves caves within the glaciers you'll see other YouTube videos people checking that out every year it changes so it's hard to say where is it it won't matter if they tell you what it was three years ago that caves probably collapsed or it's replaced by something else uh, this is Kakwa Lake this this is the what it looks like in the area I mean why wouldn't you want to go to this place I believe that would be Babette Lake over there and then somewhere over to the right would be Aqua and waterfalls flowing. Kakwa Lake again. More waterfalls. I mean, it's just beautiful every direction you look. And hitting this area on a day when it's, um, I think that be might be Mount Ida, the pyramid mountain they mentioned. And you can see someone came in on their helicopter. Lots of water and swamp around the area, so you got to know where you're going. Gorgeous, pristine lakes. Great fishing and boating and lots of people kayaking down the rivers through the Jarvis, uh, Jarvis Creek River and whatnot. But look at these views. I mean, where do you see this in the world, right? Just absolutely gorgeous views and just new things to discover. If you had enough time, you know, you could probably write a book about the things you see. These huge rock ledges up here. I mean, if you're a mountain climber, you could spend a month here and just be in your glory. Look at these views. I think they speak for themselves. Just picture after picture. I'm planning to go here sometime this summer. If I do, I'll try to, you know, mountain goats galore out there. A friend of mine 
mentioned he thinks that that you can hunt these goat without even a tag uh, but I'm not sure about that you'd have to confirm with uh, the BC Conservation Service wintertime pictures I think that might be one of the cabins there great for snowmobiling lots of videos out there showing what it looks like out here but I mean this is fantastic country people absolutely fantastic and I think that's gonna bring us to the end there's this person who uh, did a full trip report about 11 years ago in 2010 and I'm just gonna scroll through and show an actual person's pictures who came 10 years ago to give you an idea of what they saw right here's the dock right at the uh, area this is I believe Babette Lake this this uh, thing I don't believe is there anymore the other thing is when you park your vehicle remember kakwa is a native word for porcupine you got to put chicken wire around your vehicle if you park it there anywhere on the road like near that Bastille Bridge because it's been known that porcupines will chew on the uh, brake lines and whatever and you don't want that or fuel line or whatever so yeah it's kind of essential to do that uh, mountain bikes maybe you can mountain bike from Bastille Bridge into Kakwa Park hasn't been done recently so I'm not sure the condition but it's probably worth giving it a try if you can't make it just bail out leave your bike uh, somewhere on the trail and the way back you can bike back right so no harm no foul but you can see here the condition lots of water you're going to get wet guys just accept you're going to get wet um, everyone that's been through here for the past 10 years says you're going to get wet there's no bridges there's lots of water flowing depending on the time of year it could be deep it could be shallow you're going to have gorgeous views. Um, bridges washed out. Lots of creeks to cross. Lots of gorgeous views of these mountains. And this is the cabin. And you can't reserve it. It's first come, first serve. But apparently it sleeps, I don't know, 10 or 15 people. Um, I think in the summer it's highly unlikely it'll hit its limit. In the winter, maybe snowmobilers could hit that, but anyway. So yeah. Porcupines, that's what they look like. I saw a bunch of them yesterday. I couldn't get it on camera, just couldn't get it out in time. Here's Kakwa Lake and there's the dock. More pictures of the area. Looks like bridges being collapsed or structures collapsed. Waterfalls pouring down. Absolutely beautiful. I believe this is the road up to Babat Lake. And lots of neat things there. And again, there was a quartz quartzite mine up here by Ian Monroe Mountain. So that's probably one of the trails to the trapper's cabin, but I'm not sure. Who knows? And good enough so you can see you can hike up those mountains and see some stunning views up here and we'll end it there so anyway um, thank you all for listening to me in this video hopefully I can get some more information uh, in the future um, hope this helps you out if it does leave comments let this video be a collection of new information anyone who's made the trip if you have questions I'll try to answer them here and with that I will call it uh, the end of the video 